What's up, truckers? Tricky Mick here. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're keeping the shiny side up, as I like to say. Don't forget to subscribe, honk the like button, ring the notifications bell, and comment below to let me know how you feel about today's topics. So today we've got three things to talk about, so let's get right into it. Everett expands their Nashville area distribution. Ryder buys Cardinal Logistics. And Landstar says two more quarters before recovery. Avert expands Nashville area distribution fulfillment operation. Expansion part of several major facility upgrades in Middle Tennessee. Avert Express has moved into a new distribution and fulfillment center near Nashville as part of the company's expansion and enhancement of three key facilities in the Middle Tennessee area. The less than truckload carriers distribution and fulfillment center in Lebanon, Tennessee features 280,000 square feet of enclosed freight storage space aimed at equipping Averett for regional deliveries and nationwide transport, according to a news release. Lebanon is located about 30 miles east of Nashville. And here it shows their uh, distribution and fulfillment operation in Lebanon, um, located off of Interstate 840. Avert has also recently completed renovations of its Nashville Area Service Center, which now spans 42 acres and includes 510 truck parking spaces and 162 dock doors. The facility accommodates 190 drivers and over 300 associates. Upgrades to the Nashville Service Center include renovations to office and dock space, new restrooms, and new truck drive through wash space and upgraded fuel base. Now, this is awesome to see because we all know being on the road, sometimes the wash bays are backed up quite bad, the fuel bays are backed up, and, and maybe it's going to take you three hours to get that truck wash when here it might take you only a half hour. And, you know, the same thing when it comes to fuel. Um, I'm at a Loves right now, and there's actually four of their fuel pumps down and last night the showers were backed up as well so there's some major issues that happen sometimes when it comes to truck stops additionally Avert has moved its on-tour logistics operation into a 90,000 square foot warehouse which previously housed the company's distribution and fulfillment operation in Lebanon Averett's OTL operation caters to the logistic needs of different events and entertainment enterprises by providing secure, specialized storage and transportation for artists' gear and production equipment. Our commitment to our facilities is a direct investment, not just in our own network, but also in our customer success. Joe Paul Tackett, director of Averett's Nashville Service Center, said in a statement. Cookville, Tennessee-based Averett Express has more than 5,700 tractors and 13,000 trailers with 85 locations across the country. Averett's team consists of more than 8,000 associates, according to its website. Now, again, I, I love seeing this, that they're expanding the facility. They're getting new wash bays, new restrooms, upgraded fuel base. This is going to save a lot on labor when it comes to downtime with trucks. On to the next topic. Ryder buys Cardinal Logistics, significantly growing its dedicated business. HIG Capital is seller of company whose top two execs were Ryder employees. Editors note, the article and headline have been revised to clarify Ryder's DTS full year revenues. Ryder System is dramatically growing its dedicated transportation services operations with the acquisition of Cardinal Logistics. The investment firm of HIG Capital was the seller in the deal. A price was not disclosed, and Ryder said it would not answer further questions about the transaction, which is closed. However, it did say that the deal would be discussed on the company's earnings call on February 14th. No price was disclosed. In the third quarter of 2023, dedicated transportation solutions at Ryder had a total revenue of $448 million, down from $455 million a year earlier. And we're going to see a similar thing with Landstar here in a second. Full year revenue in 2022 for DTS was $1.786 billion. By comparison, the transport topics list of the top 100 for higher carriers has Cardinal Logistics with 2022 revenue of about $1.1 billion. DTS reported a total fleet count of 11,100 units in the third quarter with 5,200 power units at the close of the three months. It wasn't immediately clear that all of Cardinal's business and assets were going to be placed in DTS. In its prepared statement, Ryder said it would fully integrate Cardinal operations, facilities, and equipment into its dedicated transportation, fleet management, and supply chain businesses. Those three divisions make up all of Ryder, with fleet management coming in at $1.5 in revenue in the third quarter. That percentage has been dropping, and that is part of Ryder's plan. Supply Chain Solutions, a provider of logistics services, had revenue of $1.2 billion in Q3. DTS had $448 million in revenue. But even though the news release referred to Cardinal activities impacting all three segments of Ryder, the company statement said, The Cardinal acquisition will further advance Ryder's strategy to accelerate profitable growth in its dedicated business. 
The statement also said the acquisition will be uh, accretive to riders' earnings by 2025 after achieving synergies and completing integration efforts. Now, this is probably one of the most difficult things when you um, get another company you know, bought by another large trucking company. Both of these companies have been successful and have their own ways of working things. So uh, drivers you know, that are currently work well, really anyone who's currently working for or with Cardinal Logistics is, is going to have some growing pains as you know they're converted kind of into uh, the rider side of things. In its 10K filing last year, Ryder said, through our DTS business, we combined equipment, maintenance, professional drivers, administrative services, and additional services, including routing and scheduling, fleet sizing, safety, regulatory compliance, risk management, and technology and communication systems to provide customers with a dedicated transportation solution that is designed to increase their competitive position, improve risk management, and integrate their transportation needs with their overall supply chain. They should have split that up into a few sentences. That is a long sentence. DTS had 209 customer accounts at the end of 2022, according to the filing. The 10K report also said most of the DTS activities are short haul, so its drivers are home each night. It also said DTS assets utilize the maintenance facilities of riders' fleet management solutions sector. But it also said DTS can work in conjunction with SCS, possibly explaining the reference in the release about the Cardinal Logistics acquisition impacting all three segments of rider. Cardinal was founded by Tom Hostler and Vin McLaughlin in 97. Hostler is CEO and McLaughlin is chairman. Both started their logistics career at Ryder in the 1980s and early 1990s. The statement described Cardinal's activities as primarily being focused on consumer packaged goods, omni-channel, grocery, building products, automotive, and industrial verticals. We chose Ryder to continue our legacy because of the company culture, Hostler said in the statement. We experienced first-hand riders, people first, customer-centric culture, and that had an impact on us as we built our own company. So that that's that's kind of crazy to see Ryder buying Cardinal Logistics. But, I mean, you know, as the trucking companies keep going, uh, this is what we're going to see probably uh, build up further and further throughout the years. It seems harder and harder for, uh, you know, the, the little guy that's running, you know, five or ten trucks to compete with these big companies, unfortunately. Landstar says two more quarters before recovery. Current down cycle to last eight quarters. Broker Landstar system is still pointing to mid-year as the likely inflection point to the prolonged freight recession. Management from the company said most cycles last between six and eight quarters, noting that the fourth quarter was the sixth straight of revenue declines. Landstar, uh, this is their stock here on the NASDAQ, reported fourth quarter earnings per share of 162 Wednesday after the market closed. The result was in line with the consensus estimate, but 98 cents lower year over year. The recent period included one fewer operating uh, week than last year, presenting a headwind to year over year comparisons. Now, if you actually sit here and look at uh, Landstar stock, you'll see it's, it's been a pretty good investment for most people. I mean, you know, it's not like the stock itself is going down in value. I mean, you know, we're just talking about, you know, year over year earnings. So people were expecting it to be a little bit higher, but you know, I digress. That's that's what the stock market does sometimes, especially when we have, you know, a freight recession. You have people trying to say that, you know, there's a driver shortage when all the facts are pointing to the exact opposite. Um, so revenue fell 28% year over year to 1.2 billion, which was worse than management's guidance. The company generated 65 million in revenue during the extra week last year. Total loads hauled by trucks declined 22% year over year and revenue per load was down 10%. Management said the sequential decline in trends seen during January was in line with normal seasonality. And now you can look here and see, you know, in this chart, um, you know, the year over year losses, you know, 1.2 billion versus 1.6. You know, purchase transportation was under a billion for 23 and you know just over a billion for uh, 22 and then we're seeing the same thing year over year and if you look over here at the chart you know uh, and every metric that they have basically they they did less you know year over year whether that's you know like 10 percent over here for revenue per load or you know we're looking at 30 percent for total truck transportation revenue um, and, and even negative 40 percent in operating income so that's that's where the real you know big big issue is here but the gross profit margin was still um, you know at negative 3.8 percent because it could have been a lot worse but you know I digress truckload capacity has been slow to leave the industry trucks provided by Landstar's business capacity owners BCOs which are owner operators who haul almost exclusively for the company were down 13 percent year-over-year and four percent lower sequentially 
Management said 20% of the BCOs terminated cited an inability to pay for repairs as a reason for not running currently. And that's an unfortunate thing as we're seeing trucks uh, cost more and more as they're getting more complicated to fix. The company said the recently departed BCOs, which normally can hold on longer during downturns, will return once rates improve. I don't think it's anything that's systemic going forward, said Joe Beacom, Chief Safety and Operations Officer, on a Thursday call with analysts. Small carriers across the landscape are leaving the market in rapid fashion. We're not immune to that. Asked if brokerage spreads need to improve to keep more BCOs on the network, outgoing president and CEO Jim Catoni said, I've been here for 27 years and the pricing on truck generally catches up to the cost of inflation in a year or two. He said the spreads with carriers were the widest they had ever been on the platform a year ago, indicating the market was loose and carriers were taking what they could get. That gap has been closing since and carriers are now pressuring Landstar for more rate, which Catoni said indicates some market tightening. You know, and then here's you know their chart for uh, the market, which man, that's not that doesn't look good at all for spot rates. I mean, a dollar eighty four. I mean, I'll tell you right now, I'm a company driver and I make a dollar ten a mile. So, you know, when you're looking at freight that's only paying a dollar eighty four a mile, it really makes you think twice about you know starting your own truck company. Landstar expects revenue for the first quarter to be in a range of one point one billion to one point one five billion. A 22% year-over-year decline at the midpoint. Loads hauled by trucks are expected to decline between 14 and 16%, with revenue per load down by 8 to 10%. The company is calling for first quarter EPS of 125 to 135, well short of the $1.63 estimate at the time of the print. A reset of the variable compensation program and expenses tied to the CEO transition will be a 12 cent drag on the first quarter. The company said a modest revenue mix shift away from BCOs could be a margin headwind in the period as well. Assurance costs have surged too. Landstar's annual renewal for liability coverage has increased to more than 30 million from approximately 8 million in 2019. You know, so you're talking about three and a half times the cost it used to be in 2019, unfortunately. Variable contribution or revenue less purchase transportation and commissions fell 24% year over year to 178 million. The contribution margin improved 80 basis points to 14.8% as purchase transportation expenses as a percentage of revenue declined modestly. The company generated $394 million in cash flow from operations in 2023, a 37% year-over-year decline. Gatoni is retiring from Landstar on Thursday. His successor, Frank Lanegro, uh, CFO at Beacon, will take the helm on Friday. Shares of Landstar were down 0.9% Thursday at 3.03 p.m. compared to the S&P 500, which was up 1.1%. But, uh, you know, they don't always follow uh, each other very well like that. I mean, trucking is a major industry, and, and sometimes you're just going to have to, you know, sit through the bear market and ride it out. Um, you know, so what do you think about Avert expanding their Nashville distribution, you know, rider buying, cargo logistics, and Landstar saying two more quarters before recovery? Uh, you know, do you think that the freight recession is going to end soon? Do you think that we're going to be able to uh, bounce back with many of the owner operators having high expenses and not being able to ride it through? Well, I'm Tricky Mick. Keep on rolling, and I will see you next time.